43. Execution. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Bethany whispered as she pulled away. She took a few steps away and did a roundhouse kick aimed at Harry's butt. Harry winced as he rubbed his butt with a pout. That's for keeping this wonderful secret from us for almost a decade. Look at what we could have enjoyed. Running through the woods in wolf form is a fantastic thing. Bethany ranted, then she glared at Harry. Meanie. Harry stuck his tongue out at her. More knowledge means more danger. I still don't regret not telling you. It's safer, plus. You can enjoy the running now. You're both still young and... Yeah, yeah. Sebastian cut him off before he started his speech, which could be very long. Harry laughed and gave Sebastian a noogie. Okay, stop, stop. Sebastian whined and slapped Harry's hands away. All right, let's get out of here. I have been pretending to be stuck in this hellhole for weeks. I really don't want to spend another second here. I stink and I want a bath now. Baby, Bethany and Sebastian murmured and Harry's head snapped towards them with a smile. What was that, brats? Bethany and Sebastian flinched before hightailing out through the window. Harry chuckled at their antics before turning to his silent son. You seem quiet, Joseph. Something on your mind? Joseph hesitated for a few moments before he sighed. Did you know that Mum was a princess? Harry's eyes softened and he smiled nostalgically. Yeah, found out when I saw her using her powers. He laughed as slung his arm around Joseph's shoulder. Funny thing was that she tried to hide it and said that I'm hallucinating and did this weird gesture in front of my face. Harry said as he tried to copy Cherlin's gesture by wriggling his fingers with an eyebrow raised and mouth shaped to an O. Joseph laughed at the gesture with Harry's weird face to boost. That's Mum for you. Joseph said with a grin. Yeah. Harry said and they shared a smile. Yo, Bethany's head popped out from outside of the window. Bond later when we're not in an enemy territory and get your furry asses out of that stinky room. With that, her head disappeared. Nice to see that she still got that sassy spunk after months. Harry said with a deadpan face. Joseph laughed and patted his back before climbing out the window. From that view, he saw Sebastian landing on the soft, grassed ground, Bethany not far behind. Joseph chuckled when he saw Bethany jumping onto an unsuspecting Sebastian's back. Sebastian stumbled but managed to catch his twin and support her with arms around her thighs. After a while, Harry and Joseph managed to land on the soft, grassed ground safely. Bethany crossed her arms and said, Took you two slowpokes long enough. Come on, let's get going before anybody catches us. Oh, what if someone already did? They spun around and Bethany was knocked to the ground by something heavy. Bethany raised her arms in time to defend herself from sharp fangs to sink into her neck. She grunted as she struggled to push the furry body that was crushing her off. Sebastian cursed as he raised his gun and aimed for the beast on top of his twin. The thing went limp with a clean shot through the forehead from Sebastian. Bethany grimaced as she pushed the limp body off of her. Like my little friends, a voice said as a lady walked out. Bethany took a whiff of her and snarled. You. The lady smiled. Ah, the princess remembers me. Then she sneered. How wonderful. Sebastian growled. Anelia shushed him. What a nasty dog growling. How improper. Then her eyes glowed red and the beasts surround them. But back to my little friends. Like them? They're the best killing machine that was created. By yours, truly. Why create them at all? Joseph gritted out. Anelia's eyes flashed. Ah, another halfling. How wonderful it is to finally meet you. Joseph furrowed his brows, then realization hit him. Don't look into her eyes. Joseph exclaimed, but it was too late. Everyone except Joseph straightened, a lost look in their eyes. You're the other hybrid, aren't you? Ding, ding, ding. Neat abilities to have, isn't it? With a direct eye contact and boom. You're a goner. Anelia smirked. And for your former question, for war, fellow hybrid, for war. Then Bethany unsheathed her katana and placed it on her neck. Now, be a good boy and follow me, or she dies. Joseph snarled and glared at Anelia, but stopped when Bethany's katana was pressed hard enough for the skin to tear, and small amount of blood trickled down slowly. Joseph gritted his teeth and started moving. Anelia grinned. That's a good boy. Bethany woke up with a gasp. There was a slight itchiness on her neck. She reached up to scratch, but she couldn't. She looked down and saw that her hands were bound. She groaned, then flinched when she heard something move beside her. She turned and saw that it was a frowning Joseph. He too was bound. Joseph turned to her when he heard her moving. He tried smiling, but it turned into a grimace. Hey, you're awake. What happened? Bethany asked. Joseph sighed. We were concerned. That Anelia lady? She's the other hybrid. She mind-controlled all of you. I was too late to warn you all to not look into her eyes. That's how you get controlled. The edginess returned and Bethany once again tried to scratch, but Joseph stopped her. Don't. Anelia controlled you and used you to threaten me. Katana pressed on your neck. That bitch, Bethany growled. Ah, 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 mind your words when you're the one stuck in a cell. Bethany growled. Why don't you come in here and let's see who's the one to get stuck? Anelia smirked as she crouched down to be face to face with Bethany. 
Oh, Bethany, how naive can you be? With my abilities, you don't stand a chance. Bethany lunged forward, but she realized that she was chained to the wall by her handcuffs. Bethany struggled and snarled, waking both Sebastian and Harry. Anelia smirked. Ah, oh, never thought you'll lose? Pity. Let this be the first. With that, she stood up. Just then, another person came. Stop provoking the prisoners, Anelia. Harry looked up at the voice and growled. Edric, how nice of you to join us. Eadric grinned. Oh, Harry, it's been too long. How are you? Harry looked down at his chain body, which was more exaggerated than the other three's chain, and looked up at King Eadric with an eyebrow raised. King Eadric huffed. How inconsiderate of me to ask such obvious question. Bethany snarled. Drop the act. I know you're not what others think you are. You threatened your son and wife with the life of your daughter, and for what? Helping the vampires? Bethany chuckled and glared at Anelia, then at King Eadric. First sanctuary? You know, the moment you win, they'll turn to you and kill you all off next. King Eadric clapped. Wonderful speech, but I think you've got it all wrong. I don't help vampires. I'm just aiding them to get what I want. And you trust them to give you that? Sebastian spoke for the first time after he woke up. He pointed at Anelia with his chin. You trust her? King Eadric smiled. It's not the matter of trust here. Pups like you won't understand. With that, he walked out, Anelia trailing behind him, but not without a last parting words. I look forward to the execution. The doors closed heavily behind them. Bethany grabbed a rock and threw it to the opposite wall. Sebastian flinched as the rock landed right beside his head. Hey, watch where you're throwing that. Sorry, Bethany murmured. Sebastian sighed. We have to get out of here. Didn't you hear him? There will be an execution and it won't be long before we're going to get dragged out of here and get our head chopped off. How? Joseph growled. The moment we make direct eye contact with Anelia, we'll get mind controlled. Bethany huffed and tried brainstorming, but for once her mind was blank. They can't close their eyes, they can't fight without their sight, even if they could have the malfunction hybrids to think about. Then, a small letter appeared out of thin air and landed on her lap. She picked it up and read through it. She grinned when she saw what was written. Boys, I might just have the perfect plan. That will be all. An auburn hair man with glowing red eyes said as he leaned back into his chair. Laciani let out a silent, relieved sigh. Finally, the meeting's been adjourned. Just when he was about to stand up and leave, he was brought back to his seat when the man that sat at the head of the table spoke up. One more thing. The man said as he leaned in. There will be an execution happening later, so please do show up. Laciani exchanged confused glance with Adriana, who sat across him, then turned to the man. Who will be executed, father? The auburn hair man with glowing red eyes, now identified as the Vampire King. Just a little traitor Anilia found. Lysiani looked unsure, but nodded. Now, you all may leave. With that, the Night Council members got up, and one by one they started leaving. Lysiani and Adriana were one of the first to leave. They met up with Ryu, who they bumped into in the hallway. Did you hear about the execution? Adriana asked Ryu. Ryu nodded. I did. I have a bad feeling about this whole executing a traitor thing. How important is this traitor that the king wants everyone to witness? Ryu said, his eyebrows furrowed. It makes no sense. Well, we'll find out in a minute. Lysiani said as he led them to the execution hall. Fellow vampires. King Tyrion's voice boomed as he stood up from his throne. I've gathered you all here today to let you witness the execution of a traitor. Lysiani, Adriana, and Ryu stood next to the throne so they had the perfect view. Queen Themia was at her usual spot sitting beside the king. This traitor has been posed as a threat to our society. We were relieved to have finally caught him with the help of the lovely lady Anelia. King Tyrion waved his arms to the sidelines where Anelia stood. Anelia smiled and gave a little curtsy. Now, without further ado, bring out the traitor. It took both Lysiani and Adriana's full strength to stop Ryu from launching himself forward as a thrashing Joseph was dragged out. Queen Themia looked on with her eyes widened in fear, her daughter execution playing in her mind. This traitor had been leaking important information to the dirty dogs helping them form plans to defeat us. I'm no traitor, you are, using innocent lives of both your people and werewolves for experimenting. Lies. Every word this traitor spill are nothing but lies. Admit it, you're killing me off because I'm a hybrid. King Tyrion gasped. Killing off dirty blood hybrids are not a rare thing to be done in this very hall. Joseph snarled. Not this hybrid. I'm born from the mating bond between the Red Wolf Prince, Prince Harrison Lloyd, and the eldest daughter that you mercilessly killed in this very hall, Princess Sherlin. Gasps and whispers could be heard throughout the hall as they gossip about the late princess and the new-found prince. Kill me then, Joseph exclaimed with a grin, shutting the whole room up. Not only the Red Wolf Pack will come for your head, 
but so will the prophecy children and their allies. As soon as Joseph spoke of the prophecy children, King Tyrion smirked. Ah, but not if the prophecy children are the ones that kill you. Joseph's grin was immediately wiped off his face. What? Bring out the executor. No, no, no. Adriana murmured as Bethany walked out, her eyes blank and katana in hand. With her appearance, the hall was filled with whispers again. What prophecy children? No longer are they harmful to this kingdom as I have them under my control. She's being mind-controlled. Lysiani whispered as Bethany sluggishly walked towards Joseph, who was trying to wake her up by constantly calling her name and asking her to snap out of it. Any last word, prince? King Tyrion sneered. Fuck you, you cold-blooded bastard. I hope you die soon. Joseph snarled. King Tyrion's face turned blank. Funny, considering you're the one dying today. He sat down on his throne. Kill him. No! Ryu exclaimed. Bethany raised her katana and slashed Joseph's neck. Ryu, Lysiani, Adriana, and Queen Themia watched in horror as Joseph choked on his own blood, went limp on the ground. Ryu growled as he lunged at the king, his daggers drawn and aimed to kill. You bastard! That's what's different with you vamps and the wolves. Ryu's attack was blocked by Anelia's, but her strength was no match to a widowed mate's grief as his daggers pushed hers away and slashed her left eye. Anelia screamed as she covered her bleeding left eye. At the center, Bethany went limp and collapsed to the blood-soaked floor. He was only a mere hybrid. Why did you got so worked up? King Tyrion said as he stood up angrily. They aren't afraid to protect what's precious to them. Ryu glared at him, his eyes glowing emerald green. He was my mate. Then King Tyrion was stabbed from behind. What? He turned and faced a tear-streaked face of Queen Themia as he knelt to the ground in pain. Even if it means they'll die trying. He was my grandson, you bastard. Ryu tried running towards Joseph's body, but more elite guards appeared, one of them picking Joseph's body up and retreating. No. Ryu exclaimed as he fought his way to get to the guard. Some of the guards were then blew away by a big gust of wind. Ryu turned and saw Adriana with her arms outstretched. You. King Tyrion tried reaching to Queen Themia, but Lysiani was in front of her in seconds with his sword drawn. King Tyrion saw this and chuckled. Then it grew until it became a hysterical laugh. Traitors! You're all traitors! Guards, lock them up and never let them see the light! Ryu had cut down a dozen guards before he was knocked down and pressed to the floor by several guards. He turned his head and saw Adriana in the same position. Lock them in the lowest dungeon. No water, no food. Let these traitors rot in there. All of them were now locked in the lowest dungeon with no food and water. There was no light, no wind, no nothing. He's dead. No one wanted to state what had happened back at the execution hall, but Ryu broke it. Just when I had found him, now he's... Ryu was then pulled into someone's embrace. Let it out, my child. A wet voice said, and it's identified as Queen Themia. Let it all out. So he did. What felt like hours of silence and small sniffles later, a faint light appeared and the familiar jiggle of keys were heard. They stood up, preparing for a fight if they're going to get dragged to get executed. The door swung open. Man, it's dark. A familiar voice said. Use this. Another voice said as the torch was passed to the former. When the torch was in front of the man, they gasped. There, in front of them, is a very much alive Joseph freaking Lloyd.